Hello listeners, the Adam Glass here. Before we get into this week's episode of Lost and Criterion, I wanted to remind everyone that I'm dumb and Pat follows my lead. You see, this week we're talking about Peter Brook's 1963 adaptation of The Lord of the Flies, and throughout the episode we call Jack by Roger's name. Jack and Roger are separate characters, and we conflate them, and then completely ignore Roger's actual role. Hopefully that doesn't stop you from enjoying this fine film. If anything, the fact that all little white boys look the same to me just cements how scary they can be in a massive unsupervised group. Which I think is one of the main lessons we learn from Lord of the Flies. Enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm your host, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. I'm joined once again by a man who eats nails for breakfast, lunch, but not dinner. The Adam Glass. Funnily enough, uh, not uh, not the sort of nails you might be thinking about. <laughs> what are we talking about this week, Pat? I have absolutely no idea. Well, I have Lord of the Flies. I have somewhat of an idea. We're talking about the 1963 release, 1961 shot, uh, Peter Brook directed version of Lord of the Flies, the first film adaptation of the Willem Golding book of the same name. I didn't know there was a second adaptation until I looked at the yeah, there was one in the uh, one in the 90s. I, I feel like I've seen bits I had of no that idea. one. No idea. I've never seen that one. Yeah, um, that's not the one we watched in. in uh, No, it's not. It's not. I actually didn't, uh, in my class, we didn't watch the movie. I don't know why. We had the same teacher. I know. How did you not watch it? Maybe I just slept through it, or maybe she thought I was... we watched... Maybe she thought I was sleeping through it, so she got mad at me, so I wasn't allowed to watch it. (laughs) That very... That's definitely fine. She had it out for you. That did happen once. Um, I was taking notes. I was taking notes, and she stopped. I was staring at the board as she was writing, and, and... she turned around to talk, and I was still writing. My hand was moving, and I was looking up. And she stopped and yelled at me for being asleep. Uh, she had it out for <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, anyway, enough about high school, because that was so long ago. Um, yeah, no, but that's that's where all of my feelings about this well, no, are no, that is Well, no, that is, that is going to be true. Um this is this is a movie that you've seen before, but it's, it's based on a book we read in high school, um, or or at least pretended to read. Actually, on that note, the worst thing I've ever seen for sale uh, at a grocery store near where I used to live on the north side of Columbus. Uh, they had a movie section before a remodel. Um, lots of movies. Very very weird that a grocery store had such a large movie selection. Um, but w- no, that was a thing. I remember yeah, that. It was a thing for a while. Uh, one of the things that they sold uh, was a box set of this film, this specific DVD, uh-huh. with okay. the cliff notes to Lord of the Flies. Are you kidding? Shrink wrapped me? together in a cliff notes branded packaging. That's disgusting. Yes. But also super useful. <laughs> also super useful. No, actually, really super useful. This is a very faithful adaptation. Um, yeah, the only thing that I found that seems to be to belie that because it is. Yeah. But, you know, my problem is, is that I don't remember the book super well. Okay. I remember you remember the movie, the movie more well. than you remember the book. Yes. The movie s- severely colored what I remember of the book. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the movie or the book, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, it's gone. Oh, yeah, okay, what they say in the... What I saw mentioned when I was doing research for this is that a lot of... And it is, this is not supported with evidence. Thank you very much, Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, that Much of this was unscripted. Okay. And they just briefed the student... Or the, the children on what to say and do mm-hmm. before they started shooting. Yeah, uh, one... Like, each each scene was just done that way. And yeah. So some of the lines are ad-lib... Or not ad-lib, but, you know, but just, improvised. Yeah, learned... Uh, Learned by, uh, wrote. <laughs> yeah, and then just yeah. Okay, now do it this way. Yeah, kind of thing. Well, it's it's interesting you mentioned that because the uh, Peter Brooks actually wrote the essay that accompanies this on the Criterion website. 
Um, and uh, Peter Brooks, the director, uh, in case you weren't paying attention 20 minutes ago, <laughs> 20 seconds I ago. Um, anyway, um, he... Uh, you talk, I sleep. I know you do. It's late there. Anyway, uh, he says that the way they filmed this was to just set up the cameras and let them roll. And they would interrupt when needed. They'd be on, on camera talking with them when needed. Um, and then they just shot hundreds and hundreds of hours of film. Uh, and that was kind of their guarantee uh, that they would receive the financing to finish. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, the weird thing about it is it does show yeah. because getting children to act is always a challenge. Yeah. yeah. And they do a pretty good job in this. So I can only imagine that they caught a lot of tapes. Yeah. Of everything. I would To get them to agree. do and say what they needed to say. So. I, I would and, I would absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, I'll say one thing. Okay. It's a very short movie. It is. It's only an hour. It did it's not only an hour feel this short when I watched it in high school. Well, that's because when, we, when you watch in high school, you watch it over the course of at least three periods. Uh, 45 well, minute periods but you can't directly start the movie once you get into it so you're watching it at least three times more than likely yeah, to I bet you it. spent a week watching it five I bet we didn't finish it and you probably didn't finish it if, if I remember correctly any of the movies I watched in that class we never finished we but never the finished only one it. I really remember seeing uh, is uh, Romeo and Juliet no the uh, I remember we I remember watched we watched a, a substantial portion but not all of the uh, version of Hamlet starring... Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, uh, Starring... Uh, t- what's his face? Uh, Mel, Bro- uh, Mel-, Mel Brooks. Know. Mel uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Brooks. That would be the greatest <laughs> version of Hamlet ever made. I'm sure it exists somewhere. Uh, starring, starring Mel Gibson uh, in the in the titular role. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Had a lot of negative experience with Shakespeare in high school, which, which is weird. Which is why we probably don't like I had a anymore. lot of positive experience with Shakespeare in college, though. Uh, despite the fact that I, the Shakespeare class I took in college met once a week, we did a play a week uh, for three wow. hours every Wednesday night. We talked about one Shakespeare play. Interesting uh, for a for an entire semester. I bet that I bet the reading was rough. The reading was rough, especially on on some of the longer plays, and certainly on on the histories. Which you know, back, back when we talked about Henry V, I talked about how how. I've I've always found Shakespeare's history plays to be a bit dull. That's why, <laughs> uh, yeah, because my experience with them has been largely reading them. Um, did have did have some of my best uh, college paper uh, titles in that class though. Um, made a reference to the Fireside Theater album "We're All Bozos on This Bus" when talking about uh, Twelfth Night, and uh, and the professor got it and gave me gave me <laughs> gave me a little smiley face because of it. It's wonderful, I know, Adam. I know he was a weird guy. So <laughs> now, Lord of the. But Flies. back to Lord of the Flies. Um, so here's the thing: I do not remember liking the film in high school. Okay, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it's it's. Uh, I was really surprised with myself. It's well done. Um, it is. You know, shoot, I was really caught off guard. Shooting in black and white in '66 is obviously a cost-saving measure, and there's a lot of obvious cost-saving measures in this. There's. This is this is shot on a shoestring budget, and um, actually, one thing Brooks says in that essay is that there's an old French saying that you can make a movie for 150 dollars, because once you get 150 dollars into a movie, uh, you've got you've got enough promise to shoot the rest on credit, <laughs> and no one will stop you. And no no one will stop you. Obviously, I think that that threshold is probably a little higher uh, higher these days. These days. But, but I can see it though. Like yeah. once you've got you sunk the money, people know you're going to finish it. Yeah, yeah. Once, uh, once, and so they'll and, just lend and, you the money, and you've got enough to show, and they'll 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 lend you. Um, one thing one thing I really love about this edition of the film, uh, I don't re- know if you remember in our copies of Lord of the Flies, uh, there was an essay in the back, a very long essay. I don't know. Who oh, I don't remember, remember that. Uh, the essay uh, is is what got me to realize one, uh, no matter no matter what might be true about it, um, it's what made me realize that in literary criticism you can literally claim anything. Um, 
What did that essay say? I don't remember. The it. essay was the what sticks out in my mind was a focus on the death of the pig, uh, as as both Oedipal and homoerotic sexual overtones. Man, I'm glad I didn't read um, that article. Yeah, it being it being a sow, uh, the and and specifically Roger uh, piercing the the anus of the uh, of the pig and being very proud of that fact. Uh, they claimed they claimed uh, homosexual and, and animalistic and, and Oedipal overtones in that. Uh, interesting fact uh, for the parents unfamiliar with the book, uh, they provided copies uh, with that essay torn out. Uh, for, wait, for the for, for the for, who? for the parents of the cast members. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <Yeah. laughs> well, so here's my thoughts on it. Okay, okay. and I want to get into kind of the themes of the book and the movie before we talk about the movie. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Because I think I know why I like it better now than I did before. Okay. I remember thinking when I watched it the first time that it was. Well, and and read it obviously. Yeah, it's kind of a wholly unrealistic perspective on the human condition. Okay, okay, okay. And now I teach children. <laughs> and now, now you realize that thirty days is is far too long of time to give yeah, them. And in my mind now, yeah. I realize that two children dead and a and an island burnt to the ground is a pretty optimistic view <laughs> of, thir- of what of 30, 30 days children alone. will do in 30 days with no supervision. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I, that, that, that Golding is being yeah, kind. I'd give them three hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, they only burnt down the island. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Only two I know what my stu- I know what my student, yeah, I really think that two children dead is a pretty yeah. optimistic view. Now, what I will say is, is I disagree with the overall theme that, I still do disagree with the overall theme that, uh, you know, violence and evil and all this nastiness is inherent to the human condition. Because I think it's more inherent to the child condition. Mm-hmm. Using children as adult analogs is, in my mind, folly. Often. Because... The, because Children are vicious, nasty little creatures. Well, the, the much more so than even the adults you encounter, in my opinion. The thing but about the thing about that's my children, personal opinion. The thing about children is that oftentimes, especially the children of this age, are uh, mirrors and magnifying glasses of their parents' uh, beliefs. Yeah, and I understand that, but I think it's the magnifying <clears throat> yeah. glass element that makes it. A, a yeah. false, a, 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 a specious statement, so, so or a concept to say that oh, it's just yeah. they're all evil. So well, yeah, but children are also walking psychopaths. Yeah. One thing, as one thing I thought about specifically you. was 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 Roger, and Roger Roger's parents probably conservative people, but Roger himself is like this Randian uh, caricature of of, right. of ultimate libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's very uh, force rules and and you should follow me because I have a knife and it's it's all uh, protection protection of our group is the only important thing. Um, well, and and that's part of my problem is that that uh, it, this is almost taken as evidence, whereas it is still just writing. I mean, it's a yeah, work of fiction. Yeah. It didn't happen. Yeah, and obviously, and we don't know that this is yeah. the way it would go. Yeah. Now, like again, as a teacher, yeah. Like I said, two children dead yeah. is extremely optimistic for thirty days of thirty children all alone on an island. Yeah. In my opinion, and obviously in the but in the same children are psychopaths. They're yeah, they are. Awful. They are in the same in the same turn. Obviously, it being a book, uh, everybody kind of represents something, you know, and that's that's not true of reality. No one, right, exactly. No one is just this. Uh, no, no one is just the religious aspects of society. No one is just right. the the hope of democracy. No one is just, yeah, <laughs> right, right. And and there and yeah, and that desire for symbolism does, yeah, is I suppose is part of what ruins it for me. But the movie this time, yeah, being as compact as it is at telling the story, I found quite enjoyable. Yeah. As compared to the last time, maybe maybe it strikes and you as more realistic, um, just given it, your experience with is, children. With children, it, it is because I did not as if you've never taught children. Yeah, 
it's hard to understand what children are capable of. <laughs> children are capable of monstrous, monstrous things. <laughs> yes. Without adult supervision, every child is a is basically borderline a killer. Not on purpose, but they are. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way it is. They need that adult supervision. And, and yeah, so that part has become easier to swallow. And so the only sour note is that sort of symbolism where we everybody has to yeah be something and you know that's how you it, tell can't, it can't just be a story about children stranded on an island it has to be a an allegory yeah about about edi- like edible sexual overtones <laughs> i don't know about that one um i'm not so keen on that well that's one, but, that's um, that's one of my problems with that i remember in high school was that i didn't read it as allegorical for anything i read it i read it as just a straight story because i i had such negative experience of people reading too much into things and then reading that essay was was such an over-the-top uh, reading too much into yeah. it to me that, that, you know, well, and that's just, probably why I didn't enjoy it in high school, is I knew what our teacher would require of us, and yeah. so I automatically read it for symbolism, Yeah, which I hate doing. I don't want to read for symbolism. I don't want to watch for symbolism. I just want to enjoy yeah. the media. And if I find symbolism later, that's great. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. I think that's, that's why I hated it, I'm sure, when we were in high school. And why I probably enjoyed it this time, because I was able to just watch it as a... Yeah, here's you a pretty good movie about children trapped on a island. You weren't being assigned to watch it, and you know there's there's yeah. definitely a difference, you know, in reading and in, in, in viewing things, and listening to things. There's a difference in how you take it in between it's an assignment yeah. and it's something you're doing. Well, I mean, this has a little bit of an assignment feel. Sometimes I walk into these film. <laughs> well, of course, like, oh, yes, with gosh. our with our whole with our whole uh, project here, there is a bit of an assignment to it. You know, certainly I never would have watched movies like Sallow uh, <laughs> no. in my, unless we were doing this. Um, and I will never well, watch that movie again. No, no, we will not. But um but the thing is is that I approached it this time with kind of that attitude. I was like, "Oh god, I have to watch this movie again." Because I remember how much I did not enjoy it last time, and I actually enjoyed the film. Yeah, I I can't say much negative about it. There's the problems with the story itself that we've already talked about. Yeah, but the actual film, eh, pretty good. <laughs> the film is pretty good. You know, and, and again, you know, I already said it's shot in black and white, but it's it's shot in very stark black and white. And Brooks says, you know, they kind of they didn't really have lighting. That's one of the other reasons they just left the cameras on was was to get as much as possible. Um, right. Yeah. You know, uh, I I will say that uh, I was really impressed with with Ralph's acting. I was marginally impressed with Roger's acting. Uh, Piggy, though, as soon as Piggy opened his is atrocious. As, Piggy, as soon as Piggy opened his mouth, I couldn't wait for him to die. Yeah, um, I felt the same way. I was like, oh, when is this guy going to? But that's the thing. I'm not sure that you're not supposed to feel that oh, any, yeah, that way. Yeah, anyway. you're supposed to feel that way. You're kind of supposed to feel that way about about Piggy. In the book, the know? book, right? And Pig- and so Piggy's he's annoying. Yeah. Piggy's the annoying underclass that we have to put up with, and we can't just kill uh, because he's a human. Uh, but at the same time, you know, that's the protection. Guess what? We're going to the kill protection him. of yeah. democracy is that you know the 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 useless underclass still gets to be around because they're not actually useless guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, Piggy, Piggy's there, and he's not actually useless. He he serves an important function. His glasses are what keep <laughs> give them fire, um, because no one no one in the society knows how to make fire with a piece of wood. Uh, Which I found odd for boys yeah. of the generation they're supposed to be representing. Yeah, yeah, There's, it's weird no because one, they can no one here sharpen the boy spears sucks. and hunt pigs, but nobody knows how to make a fire. Yeah. It's, I mean, obviously, it's a lot easier to use it with a with a lens than with a, you know, with a, with twisting a stick. But uh, but yeah, or or finding flint or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, flint, you know, that's a that's a challenge yeah. actually. But um, now the question we also get into is it's I understand, and then we're getting into source material rather than the yeah. actual movie. But the two are so intertwined. Yeah. No, this is this is one of the most faithfully literary uh, adaptations I've ever seen. So. But, like, one of the problems I run into in the movie, as with the story in general, is that um, Ro- Roger's the bad guy, right? I forgot. Yeah, Roger's the head of, Roger? Roger okay. is the, head yeah, of that's the choir. What I thought. He, the, his, 
especially in the movie, the time it takes him to go from participatory to animalistic insanity of, like, we don't even care about getting off the island is a bit hard to deal with. All right? Again, I've dealt with children. Yeah. But they would all still want to go home. Yeah. That is that is that is one problem with condensing it the way the film condenses it because the book takes place like we said over about thirty days maybe a little longer right and so um, the movie doesn't feel yeah, that the long. movie doesn't so it feel feels that like long. we rush into some of those things yeah. like Rogers abandons this democratic element and is leading a band of madmen yeah. who don't care about getting off the island in hours yeah it feels like yeah and 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 the problem is not again for me the animalistic madness that they portray again children yes um it is the fact that they don't care about going home yeah and that that's very and that's, that's very, very unbelievable to me yeah yeah maybe after 3 months even at the end of a month they might have given up because they're children and they give up easily yes but they would all still pine for home it's hard to believe that Roger would no longer even think of home yeah even in the even in the the real story versus the high speed of the film that's hard to believe but the film makes it worse yeah so I think that's just I, my opinion I think you're right and obviously obviously for the sake of the narrative they have to stop being you know being being paralyzed by a longing to just go home um, they right. can't they can't miss their mommies too much um, because well then nothing would get done and, and and to that extent, you know, Roger, Roger and Ralph realize that they need to they need to live long enough to be rescued, and they just have different takes on why that how that goes about. And I think it's probably their leadership is is the excuse we get for why no one's just talking about going home all the time, is because they've they've set the ground rules. Um, right, but we don't get that explicit, and we don't get that explicitly stated even in the book, you know. Well, yeah, and I mean, I understand that's yeah. what's going on, but yeah, especially in the movie, it feels like wow, that happened. Yeah, does Roger have an abusive family life? Why doesn't he want to go home? <laughs> Roger just really hates his dad. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently, but yeah, no, it's 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 those elements are interesting. There's some other interesting elements that I. I mean, that's one of my major problems. Okay. With the, especially the film adaptation. Um, I did, there were certain elements I really liked. I like the introduction of the boy squire. I think that's done quite well. Oh, yeah, them. where they're, they're marching down the beach singing. Yeah, and then yeah. the music kind yeah. of goes between them singing and uh, the kind of marching. Yeah, it's really marching drum. And that music used as a leap motif for them as the hunters yeah. and you know that's that's the principal music throughout the movie is yeah. just yeah. that whenever they're doing something terrible we hear that and then every so often it goes back to the choir sounds yeah um which is kind of interesting and kind of haunting i really wish i knew what they were singing because <laughs> it just sounds like nonsense to me it probably is it's a it's presumably it's an anglican hymn it's more than likely nonsense Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's yeah. Take that Anglican church. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't even know why why I would disparage the Anglican church. I have no, yeah, I have no, no reason no, for no, that no. joke. <laughs> I don't know. Is this maybe you've picked something up from Eddie Izzard? Maybe, maybe it's either cake or death. Yes. Um, but yeah, like I don't. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to say about this film. Like, I definitely have better feelings about it than I did before. But and, I, and but would I watch it again? I don't know about that. I don't know about that either, Pat. Twice in a lifetime seems like enough. Twice in a lifetime. Uh, ah, yeah, maybe. Wait another ten years. And you can okay, and see what I think about it yeah, then. Yeah, when my son's it. old enough revisit to be the characters in the film. Actually, actually, that's a really interesting note. Um, the uh, Peter Brooks in the essay talks about how they, you know, they contacted pretty much everyone they could. They they had like three thousand kids in consideration for casting. And wow, and why? I don't know. Just because I guess. They figured if they cast a wide enough net, 
uh, they could drag in they get, some. They uh, get a fat kid with glasses. Well, they if they cast a fat white empty get net, they get people with money interested in being there and oh, having their children I see. in the movie. And if they're ch- they want their yeah. children to be in, maybe yeah. They they buy their that's, children's yeah, way. That's, that's kind of uh, an underpinning of it. I why think. why was this on such a sh- yeah. why was this so hard to get made? I don't know. Um, but but an interesting. I don't understand. An interesting. It seems note. right in line with 1961. It does. It does. No, I think. Um, but the fact that it was made, filmed in 61, and then not even released till 63 is is, is odd in itself. So, obviously, they had a lot of editing to do. Uh, but uh, but other than <laughs> right, that, right? They're like that was just pure editing yeah, time. Yeah. Two years in the editing yeah. bay. No, but but no. what I was oh, yeah. what I was getting to was that Piggy actually the boy who played Piggy wrote them a letter. He had found out about the production and wrote a letter that essentially said, "I'm fat and have glasses. I would like I'm to be perfect. I would like to be Piggy." <laughs> and I guess he was even like from Camberley, so they just they just went with him because <laughs> he wrote a a three word a three line letter to them. Oh man, it it was he again. Like he, Piggy did an excellent job making me want him dead. Yeah, yeah, and I hope. Uh, I, so I guess he was perfect. I hope that was acting because I'd hate to actually wish death upon the boy. Meet, meet somebody. Yeah, meet, <laughs> this is just who I am. <laughs> but yeah, it's the only scene that really kind of felt a little bit awful for me was. When Piggy dies, mm-hmm. the 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 only basically the only special effects in the film that that scene didn't feel smooth to me. Yeah, I don't want to call it special effects because you don't see anything, but it just didn't. It felt cheesy. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and I, that was a shame. I think I agree. And obviously, one difference between this and the book is that the book can be much more explicit in its. Violence, murdering a child, and murdering a child, and and even in murdering the pig. I mean, they can describe the, the you know the the thing, the spear, going through the anus instead of just having, having uh, Roger excitedly proclaim, "I stabbed it in the arse," or something like that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Um, uh, you know, and they can they can they can more describe. Yeah, you know, there's there's a certain uh, maybe amount of gratuity in in the book in how it describes, say, the the Lord of the Flies itself versus what we saw. Um, not that what we saw wasn't that bad or wasn't that good or was good because um, it was still disgusting. But you know, the, yeah, it's gross. Yeah, it's absolutely gross. But there's there maybe it's just the way I read, you know, letting that to my imagination visually was a lot worse than, than anything this movie could have shown me. <laughs> well, that's always the way it is. Yeah. That's that's why film adaptations are always a bit of a rough territory yeah. is because what you've got in your head will yeah. be drastically different from yeah. what they actually put on the screen a lot of times. And they, they And as far as that's concerned, I think they actually did it. That's one of the things that makes this film nice is because when you imagine a tropical beach yeah. island, you get what they showed you. Yeah. And that's your your Expectations from the book and what you see are fairly in line yeah. as far as that's concerned. One one really great thing about this movie is that you know it, it obviously it condenses a little bit, but um, instead of you know internal monologues or descriptions of uh, how the boys are feeling and what the boys are doing, we can see it and we see so much you know anger and frustration in Ralph's face. We we see yeah. we see Simon, you know, and his quiet contemplativeness and And know. that's I think why they had days and days of footage. Yeah. Is to see, to get that. Yeah. And it was probably very difficult. Yeah. And it's it's so wonderful and it's it it I mean you can cut out pages of of the novel with one <laughs> with perfect one face, with yeah. one perfect face. And they got those perfect faces. Yeah, and then when that's the risk is that like they really could have not. Yeah, yeah, that is certainly yeah. true. <laughs> they were lucky like to this, have gotten them. <laughs> yeah, to, especially have child actors because we all know. I mean, we've all seen the Star Wars prequels, huh? 
<laughs> there are a lot of really terrible child actors, but there been a, you know we've experienced a lot of really good child actors in. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw four hundred yeah, blows, the, which is the kid in the four hundred blows, beautiful, absolutely brilliant, absolutely a great actor in one of his first acting roles. Um, this was, you know, this was Ralph's first acting role. I'm sure this was a lot of the kids' first acting roles. Oh um, yeah, well, and I think the thing about it is, is again, if you're willing to shoot hours and hours of footage without yelling cut, yeah. You will probably get decent work out of them. Yeah. But you have to be willing to do that. I think you're right. I think, yeah. And I and I think, I you, you say without yelling cut, and I think that might actually be a really deep part of it. Because if, if someone were yelling cut in action and restarting the camera and rewinding the film and doing whatever, uh, it would get really frustrating really fast. But at the yeah, same time, especially if you're a the, child yeah. trying to do it. But at the same time, I think just redoing it, and you know, if if they mess up, you can you know, kneel down and say, "No, do it, do it like this, do it." You can you can be a lot more uh, humane about it, and I think being humane with child actors coaches it coaxes something better out of them. Yeah, um, I would agree. Yeah, not that I have a lot of experience working with child actors, so I, I'm just just making things up. But I think that might be. I think that might be true, you know. You've you've actually taught children. I I was just trained to teach children. So, oh, yeah. did you know the guy who played Ralph is dead? I did not know that, but you, now that you're looking at that page, you can see that uh, he had quite the acting career afterward. Went to stage almost yeah. immediately after this. Um, yeah, and that's where he did most of his work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he did a, a good job. So uh, yeah, he was a great actor. Uh, I'd rather see Ralph get more work than Roger. Uh, I don't know if, if I just didn't like Roger because of his character, if, or or if that's I really hard to design. That, didn't like some of his acting. You know, he 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 was kind of. But the thing is, I didn't feel well. Well, good news, he didn't apparently get any work. <laughs> oh, this page has been deleted. Nobody liked. He's not even. He's, Wikipedia. He's, he's, he's not even Wikipedia noteworthy. That's terrible. No. Yeah. Oh. How unfortunate for Roger. Oh. Um, but the thing is, is that it, it's hard to tell because that weird grandioseness yeah. fits his character. Yeah, absolutely fits his character. So it's hard to tell if it's just acting yeah. or, you know, it's really... That's I mean, one of the weird things about his performance is that it does feel yeah. not good at times. Yeah. But at the same time, it also feels exactly how a kid that age should, yeah, exactly, right? doing exactly how a kid that age uh, should be when he thinks he's uh, a god among men for being first boy in the boys' choir. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. And it, it, yeah, it's really hard to like tell. Yeah. And you just end up hating him, but. Yeah. You know, but you're supposed to hate him because he he's yeah. he's the bad guy. So you know, yeah, he tries to kill all of our favorite people, um, or or successfully kills our least favorite person. Oh, Piggy. Which, what's Piggy's real name? Um, I don't remember. because uh, they... who's Robert? See now you're just, now you're. She was just pulling out names. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, no. So Piggy has no further uh, credits. Okay. At least not on Wikipedia. He has no page. Okay. But some whoever is Robert went on to do a ton. I need to take Wikipedia away from you right now. Don't I? We're just going to spend the next yeah, 20 sorry. minutes doing this. And you're going to ask me, who's this character? Wasn't Robert one of, <laughs> Robert wasn't one of the yeah, twins? Yeah, I thought you remembered. Robert wasn't what? one of the twins. Uh, no, the twins are Eric... And Tim, Tim and Eric. No, it's not no, Sam and Eric. Different things. Sam and Eric. Yes, Sam and Eric are the twins. I did remember that. I, if I had thought about that, I'm going to come up with it. Um, I can't remember who Robert is. It's true. No, I don't either. Um, no, I, the point is, he was he's involved with Spider Man. Oh, there you go. He was Spider Man. When T- he was in the TV series. Oh, okay. There you go. He was Spider Man. Was he? Just was he also Peter Parker? <laughs> no. Was it a was it a Lou Ferrigno thing? Um, it doesn't actually say, so we don't know. Oh, was, oh, he did play. He did play Peter Parker. Oh, there you go. I, I don't know. I've never seen the the seventy Spider Man TV series. So oh, I don't know. it's it's a gem. I don't know how much Peter Parker actually plays into it. Um, it's a gem. If it's you know the cartoon, I, the cartoon there wasn't a whole lot of Peter Parker. 
in the in the no, Spider Man and Friends. Why are we talking about Spider Man? Because you mentioned it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just was this looking is, up the actors because I wanted to see a com- <laughs> I wanted to see what else they were involved in so that yeah. we could get a real firm idea of like what this movie did for people. Yeah. Um because it certainly launched uh Ralph's career. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, so there you go. Well, that's the thing, though. Uh, he filmed this, and then it didn't get released for two years later. In, in the year between, he he started uh, stage work. And, that's true. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So you know, it it might have gotten him interested in acting, and it was first. It was certainly yeah. his first acting role, but he was already getting other work, uh, even without having anyone having seen this. Um, that's true. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... He's just a good actor, then. Maybe if you just used your brain a little bit. And... I'm sorry I can't do math, Adam. <laughs> it's okay. Math is hard. Yeah. So, what else do we want to say about Lord of the Flies? Anything? You got anything else? Give me a second, okay? Give me a second. Give me a second, okay? Okay. Um, I like the last scene where he's running to escape, and he comes upon the, yeah. the Navy guys. The, re- the reveal really, of the that adults. Really, the reveal of the that adults. That was really, great. really yeah. better than I remember it. Yeah. Um, it was actually really good. Yeah, that's that's sort of because it's with him falling and, you know, watching it, you think, oh, he's fallen, they're going to pounce on him, he's dead now. Yeah, he's doomed. He's absolutely doomed. And then the pan up the guy's leg. <laughs> it's just a guy with a beard yeah, staring yeah. down at him, wondering what's going on. <laughs> And it's weird the feeling you get when you see the adults. Yeah. It really caught me off guard a little bit. Even though I knew how the film ends mm-hmm. and how the book ends, um, it really caught me off guard how much relief you feel. Yes, absolutely. When you see, finally, yeah, there's somebody who's not, <laughs> not insane. a batshit insane <laughs> yes. child when we were <laughs> in this world. You're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, even though I know that his character does not die, it yeah. still made me feel it's it's really good. It's yeah. very well done. Yeah, I like to imagine that back in Britain proper, uh, Roger still had a uh, had a Lord of the Flies worshiping cult. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 Roger the actor? Or no, Roger no, no. Roger? The character, the character in the in the book universe. Not the not the actor who played okay. him. But he got back to the yeah, uh, that he, back to England. He was so like, into his religion that he he created in those in those uh, three months on the island that uh, that he continued to worship it uh, for the rest of his days. Interesting. <laughs> I can I can go along with that. Why not? Why not? Always afraid that the beast was right around the corner. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Um, again, you know we've had we've had three short episodes in a row, but I don't think we need to elongate things uh, anymore. No, I I think it's we we've discussed this in the past. The yeah. show should end when the show ends. Yeah, and so I think we talked about Lord of the Flies. I I like it now. Yeah, there are problems with it, but I think they're mostly uh, we talked about source material problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the movie, especially like I said, it, I think it's worth it just for the end. Yeah. When you see those adults, it is such a relief yeah. that it kind of almost creates a sort of yeah. altered perception of what it means to be an adult. Yeah. And as, as we've said, the movie is obviously very exceptionally done, even more so for a shoestring budget. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. It really is good. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right about that ending. Uh, and it, it, hits, it hits in the book like that, too. It really does. But, you know, obviously... Obviously, pan reveals work better in movies than in books. Right? Then, then, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can you can write it a certain way, but it's 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 very clear what's it's going on. It's still not as impactful yeah. in a book yeah. as it would be in a in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, thank you once again for listening. Um, yeah, thank you. I really have What's no idea next? what next week is. Uh, <laughs> okay, me, I will go look. You've got the website. Open, somebody right? has scorned the internet. Yes. Uh, next week, told me he was going to take Wikipedia away from me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm which sorry. is the only way we can get these freaking d- things done. Hold on, hold on. I've got it already. Thank you. Next week we'll be talking about Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, which is a wonderful last name, uh, co-directing <laughs> the Red Shoes, 1948 uh, British movie. Um, 
Wikipedia, or Wikipedia, Criterion calls it uh, cinema's quintessential backstage drama. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. So we'll see you next week for that. Thanks for listening once again. Have a good day. Have a good week. Yes. Have a good life. I do. Talk to you next time. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via Lost in Criterion at WithTwoBrains.com or join us on the web at www.LostInCriterion.com.